live with your guest, the, I mean with your host, Ashley Lee. And I'm here to talk today with you and to share with you about interdimensional walking. It's an amazing process to talk about this superpower. Many people may not have heard this terminology before or these ideas before. So what does interdimensional walking? Well, very similar to this photograph here that depicts this foreground of two staircases, one going up on the left and one going up on the right. And in this process, um, we could look very typically at what we experience. Is that, do we pick the staircase on the left to walk through life? Do we pick, pick the staircase to go on the right to walk through life? Or like many interdimensional walkers, they may see the whole picture. So they may walk into that second foyer area and walk up the stairs. And as you can see, those end up on the wall, right? And how do you get to that next platform? Maybe you can jump. Maybe inside that second room is the idea that you could walk downstairs to something you can't see below. You could actually walk around to the right and go up those stairs pointing to the left, which goes up to a second level or a third level, which even may connect you to that further staircase in the background, or even walk through the little smaller hole in the wall, doorway in the wall, that takes you to a staircase in the far back corner, the far back room. Right, so interdimensional walking provides the opportunity and perceptual understanding for people to see many different awarenesses and options and potentials available in their environments. So let's go a little deeper about interdimensional walking. Interdimensional walkers have the unique ability to consider multiple perspectives of other people's understandings of the world they perceive. So they have the ability to understand multiple perceptions at the same time. And walking in life, we can have two perspectives to consider in relation to interdimensional walking. One is the perceptual perspectives. What is that? That means the perspective that I have, I can understand, perceptualize, bring in, assimilate, and activate those kinds of awarenesses as I'm walking through many dimensions of understanding in the environment I'm in. Then the second perspective to consider is the perspe perceptual perspective of the dormant interdimensional walker. And who is that? Right? Dormant interdimensional walkers are walkers who walk through many dimensions of life, but may not realize that they are having many dimensions of awareness at the same time. So let's dive a little deeper into what that means. Let's talk for a few minutes to preface this idea of the physical dimensions. Did you know that there are 12 dimensions of perceivable atomic physical worlds we live in. So we believe, we perceive that our world is physical and real when we see solid or what perceivably looks like solid objects made of atoms. And as they're made of atoms, those atoms form together, they form molecules, they form cells, they form organs, and they form organisms like us, homo sapiens, or humans, right? Or the wall, or clothes, or hair, or different things that are made up of atoms. There are 12 atomic dimensions of the physical world. And how do we know that? Well, thankfully, for the, th for the physicists in the world, they have been colliding atoms and determining these 12 dimensions of reality. So let's speak of that first dimension of reality. Oops. 
got all excited. The first dimension of reality is what? That pinpoint, right? That spark of life. That's where all life begins is that one pinpoint. Some people call it the singularity. Some people call it the creation of life. Some people call it a point at which you start. Let's talk about the second dimension for just a moment. In the second dimension, we have flat world, right? We have height and we have width, right? And in that, that world of the second dimension, it carries with it the first dimension, but it also has challenges in this physical dimension of the atomic world because it doesn't, it, there's nothing sentient in it. What does sentience mean? It means that you know you're alive. You have an awareness. You are aware you are alive. So paper doesn't know it's alive. It just is. Okay? And so we can, though, put information on the paper, right? We can write on it. We can crunch it up. We can even put our energy imprint on it. And when someone has a superpower called psychometry, right, they can read the energy that's latent on the paper. And those particles are latent inside the quantum field or quantum particles hold that conscious awareness, right? But the paper doesn't hold it. The paper doesn't work with it. The paper just, it, it, it works as a structure and a system in which the energy or the consciousness can lay on it. So it doesn't, the paper itself doesn't change the physical dynamics. It's sentience on some level that changes physical dynamics, right? Things that are alive, things that have respiration and metabolism begin the journey into sentience and knowing and having an awareness that you're alive. So that's the second dimension. Let's talk about the third dimension. The third dimension is that thing we know oh so well, right? This is where we perceive we are. We're actually living in multiple dimensions, right? We live in the first dimension because we wouldn't be alive, we wouldn't have that spark if we didn't come from that singularity, from that creational energy. The second level is we wouldn't be alive without two dimensions because two dimensions foster the growth of three dimensions, which is height, width, and depth. But aha, we know we're alive. We know we have a name, we have a role, we have all of these abstract concepts that we deal with in our everyday life that create our reality. And so in that, we actually live in truly in the fourth dimension because the fourth dimension is time and space. And we utilize physical objects, atomic physical objects in time and space and move them around like our bodies or our clothes or things in the room or build a room, all of those aspects. There is the fifth dimension. What is the fifth dimension? Well, I think the jury's out for all of that. Um, higher dimension awareness and what does that mean? There are a lot of metaphysicians and scientists and physicists determining what those you know, morphogenetic or as Rupert Sheldrake shares, right? There's these ideas of these very uh, higher levels of dimension, higher levels of thinking, higher levels of technology and how we work with the world. So the fifth dimension to me experientially feels like an expanded sense of awareness. The sixth dimension is an, is a, is an environment that I've, I've, I've journeyed into and understood is that all healing is available on all levels. So many of the healing energetic modalities really are generated from and derived from and developed inside of the sixth dimension of reality. There's a seventh dimension and an eighth dimension and a ninth and a tenth, eleventh and twelfth. And all of those have higher orders of consciousness, higher orders of understanding. I have recognized that after the sixth dimension of awareness, calculus, metrics, the way in which we describe them in our third and fourth dimensions of awareness, those metrics change. Calculus goes out the window. Other forms of sacred geometry and other forms of mathematics, if you would call it that, 
are derived from higher dimensional thinking. And that's why technologies are developed from higher dimensional thinking and knowing and understanding and accessing and living inside of. So why did we need to talk about this? Well, we needed to talk about what constructs we are literally walking through to understand and navigate what those mean for us and how it's relatable to ourselves, each other, and our circumstances we create in our lives. So let's go into this idea of inside the physical dimensions are contexts or structures of awareness that support realities. That's, that's a big concept, right? Well, let's, let's chunk it down a little bit. So for example, I view myself as a rainbow umbrella. I've got lots of perspectives. I see lots of awarenesses. I definitely am an interdimensional walker. That's probably why I came up with the wording. I didn't even know what the wording meant. I just knew that when I walked into a room and I started to express myself of my awareness and what I was experiencing, it was very different from other people. And I didn't know how to navigate that conversation to have the others understand what I'm saying and what I'm experiencing is relatable to their experience. And quite honestly, my experience sometimes. I didn't know how to fit all of those different awarenesses into a consensus or an idea where we could all understand these concepts together. So I view myself as this rainbow umbrella. And in this moment in the environment, right, it's raining. And so I think everyone could agree that there's rain or it just rained because the ground is slick with water, right? Maybe someone took a hose and hosed it down, but it looks like based upon the cloud cover from the reflection that it was a cloudy day. So rain most likely occurred when I walk into this awareness. Now let's share this awareness like we talked about. So if I'm a interdimensional walker and I'm around others who are dormant interdimensional walkers, they may see their world as it was raining and I need an umbrella and I'm going to use my black one, right? A black one or blue one. They don't see the world through the multitudes of perspectives or awarenesses, right? They may not see it the same way I see it. So there's where we have our differences of dimensions of awarenesses. And so when we walk into these different dimensions, who are you? Are you aware of the multiple dimensions of awareness or are you kind of dormant to it? And we'll talk about what that dormancy means and what, what is about that. And let's take just a moment to really delve into the idea that what if it's okay to see multiple awarenesses at the same time? So for example, I'll walk into my kitchen in the house and there will be my family members. And there are three other family members in the kitchen. I know one is wanting food, <laughs> name the dog. <laughs> and one is wanting to cook the food and wanna have the food right away. And that could be a child. And then one that really wants food, but doesn't want to cook food or do the dishes. And that could be a spouse, right? So those are cooking dimensions of awareness. Those are eating dimensions of awareness. And a lot of times we'll have that focused awareness about cooking and eating and cleaning inside the dimensional process or the walls of a kitchen. And so we have many, even in our third and fourth dimension of awareness, we have many dimensions of our aspects of our lives. It's financial, it's business, it's career, it's home, it's homework, it's roles, identities. We have many dimensions of awareness to navigate through that creates our whole entire life, right? And so inside that dimension though, are we being linear? So let's go through that. Are we being linear in our awareness? What does that mean? So linear awareness is a little left brain thinking, logical. So for example, we take this staircase, 
if we're gonna start at the bottom, we climb the top of the staircase. If we're at the top and we wanna go down or out or down to the lower floor, we're gonna go down the staircase. Or we could be in the middle and we have a choice. Are we gonna go up or down? That is very, even though we have choices, those are linear thinking, up, down, right? Things like that. Linear thinking is logical. Linear thinking is time-related. Linear thinking is this idea that I have to do it under certain rules and regulations. So let's, let's see what that does, right? Sometimes that's very helpful. Sometimes, like when you're baking a cake in a kitchen, doing a logical linear thing, using an oven to cook it and different things, you need ingredients. Probably being exact is pretty helpful because then it might taste the way you expect it to be. And you're gonna cook it for the time and the temperature that you need. So that's linear awareness. But what if you're young? What if you wanna make a cake and it doesn't have to be cooked? What if you wanna make a cake and it looks very different, right? I don't know, how about a mousse cake that's made out of avocado and cocoa powder, right? Chocolate mousse, right? Those are different ways to look at things that are outside of our linear awareness. I find with myself and all other people, when we get stuck in linear thinking and we want to solve problems, we want to conflict resolve, we want to grow our awareness beyond the chocolate cake we're used to making and we want to have a new one, maybe a lemon meringue pie. We can't use the same ideas, right, to create that lemon meringue pie. So what I'm saying is, is sometimes we get confusion, we get stuck, we get demanding, we get push energy to make our logical world become more linear, more aware, and have very finite constructs. But interdimensional walkers, well, they don't really like so many rules, regulations, and stuck in a box kind of concepts. And there's downsides to that too. But let's talk for just a moment about abstract awareness. When we talk about abstract awareness, what does that mean? Well, for very linear people who look at this photograph, for example, may seem it's gray and dark. It's very cold and very linear in its design, but then very abstract. So what does it mean? Why is it there? And why does it look like that? But instead of all these why questions, very abstract thinkers, very interdimensional walkers, will walk up to a, a sculpture like this and go, okay, what is this made of? It's made of cement maybe, or some hard construct. It definitely is cold. The gray colors are really cool because they add different levels of contrast depending upon where the light is coming in from. So on the foreground, this is an amazing structure. What does it look like? What does it feel like if I go to the back of the wall and look this way towards the structure? What does it look like then? If I go to the right, what does the structure look like, feel like, and mean to me? What does it mean on the left? Or maybe I can grow a little bit in size lower and be a child again and climb up onto the apparatus and then have a higher viewpoint or higher perspective of what this awareness is bringing forward. What does the artist want to share with us? Maybe multiple perspectives, maybe multiple opportunities and potentials. That's why abstract awareness can be very helpful in our everyday lives also. When we move into this idea of abstract consciousness and awareness, we really bring in the universe. We bring in potentials that we never knew were available. And the really awesome thing is we can bring that to a way of sharing that with the world by utilizing different communication techniques that we're gonna talk about in just a little bit. I wanted to first preface this idea before we learn how to share our awarenesses with one another is the ability to see the multiple perspectives of others. It's very hard to share your perspective 
whether it's linear and logical or whether it's super expanded, multidimensional walking through an environment. How do we have the ability to see what the other person is thinking, what the other person is feeling, sensing, and experiencing? Because when we can become more congruent, at least even in the ideas of what the other is seeing and experiencing, we have the opportunity to set up for better communications, better conversations, better experiences with one another, and better relationships. So that's why it's very motivating to learn these different perspectives or notice them, become aware of them. So what does an interdimensional walker experience when others, with others, who may be dormant to interdimensional walking? Well, I have a really cute story to share with you. So I'm a pediatric ICU nurse and one day in the hospital, I was working a 12 hour shift and in that 12 hour shift, I had my lunch break and I'm in the lunch room and I have my little speakers on and I'm listening to music, relaxing, vegging out, eating lunch. And all of a sudden the walls start moving literally in front of my eyes. There are other people in the room and I know for a fact they're not experiencing that because they're not looking around going, what is going on? So of course I look around and go, what is going on? Why are we doing this multidimensional walking when I'm sitting, eating lunch, why am I having this experience? So I ask my inner guidance and I say, hmm, what is this about? What, why is the walls moving right now? And my higher self shares with me, well, what does the person to the right of you experience? Well, she actually experiences this room being very small. So hence, the walls come in, in my perspective. I can actually see it and the walls are moving. I'm not hallucinating, I'm not imagining, I'm actually seeing for real what the other person is experiencing, a small closed in lunchroom. Maybe she wanted to be outside and have lunch, but the unit was too busy. So she decided to stay close, close to home in the unit, in the lunchroom. Okay, isn't that fascinating? And then, how did the walls get big? Well, there was another person to my left and she was eating lunch and her perspective was the room was big enough, maybe even a little larger than she needed to eat lunch and have a great time and have a great break, but the walls were expanded for her. And then the walls compressed for the other one because their perspective was one had plenty of room and lots to work with, and the other one had very little to work with and wanted to be somewhere else, thinking that the room was very small, constrained, and condensed. I thought it was a fascinating lesson in interdimensional walking in that moment. And so I said, so where am I at perceptually? Maybe that I'm not even gonna have this conversation with them because I want them to enjoy their lunch. I wanna meet them where they're at. But at the same time, I wanna acknowledge with compassion and love. So maybe the one that has the smaller space and feels constraint, constrained in the environment, maybe they need a pat on the back. Maybe they need an acknowledgement of what a great job they're doing. And that really is a beautiful place to help children heal, learn, grow, support, and move through their healing journeys, right? Their families. Maybe the one that has an expanded awareness, we can have an expanded conversation of doing things differently than we never knew we could do before. So what that allowed me to do was to see the different perspectives of people literally so that I could really understand how to interact with them even in a more in-depth way that met them where they were at. So for me, the walls were the walls, the room was the room, the size was, I don't know, 14 by 16 feet. So it wasn't really huge, but it was enough for some people to eat and have a refrigerator and, and, and have your, a break. So in that experience though, that room did not limit my experiences of how I felt, how I'm being, and what I'm believing is, is possible. So those are the ways in which interdimensional walking has the ability for us to learn how to relate to others. 
So what are the perspectives of an in, that an interdimensional walker experiences? Right? That can get really wild and fun. An interdimensional walker sees and feels, senses and knows the environment, has energetic information to share through the many perspectives of the awarenesses the walker notices. So for example, when, when the interdimensional walker goes to shake a hand of another person, it's not just the hand, right, that you're shaking. You're shaking information. You're shaking energy. You're shaking that person's love, respect, honor. Or just shaking because that's the way that society norms are, and they really don't care to shake the person's hands, right? They can feel that, sense that, and know that. That's what's really fascinating about an interdimensional walker. They know that the environment, the world, our world, holds energy and information that that person can access. We all can access it. So let's talk about some of the challenges to experiencing multiple awarenesses. How do walkers, interdimensional walkers, share their experiences, right? They can share them by being silent and smiling. They can share them by recognizing the room for one person was really small and the room for a big, another person was really big. So now they know how to shape that conversation ongoing with that person, at least in that day. Of course, they may change their perspective the next day. But how do interdimensional walkers, we first share with our thoughts, we share with our heart, our emotions, and then we share with our words, spoken, or text, or written. We share in lots of different ways that we talk about in other superpower shows. We start to develop clarity with the environment. So, right? Clarity. The person on my right was thinking the world is small. It's okay. It's not good or bad. That's the way she was thinking. Quite honestly, when I discern and I look deeper into the energy of what that means, I think she just really wanted to go outside and have the expansive and the free air, not air conditioned air. Right? So that's developing the clarity of the environment, absence of judgments. Then we want to set the listening. And what does that mean? If interdimensionals want to share as the speaker, it's their responsibility to take an assessment developing clarity of the environment to set the listening. Because if the listeners are dormant interdimensional walkers and they're not recognizing the different feelings, beliefs, and understandings other people are having, it's hard for them to listen to what it is you have to share. So speaking from their perspective helps tremendously to set the listening. Then it lands for them and then they can hear you more clearly. I suggest everyone practice that. Meet the listener where they're at. Set the speaking with clear understanding relative to the listener's dimensional point of view. Everybody take a breath in, breathe that in. You can do it. I know we can all do it. Even if we're dormant interdimensional walkers and we see a big expanded person and they're talking about the universe and you're like, what are they talking about? Say, ah, oh, that may be an active interdimensional walker. I'm feeling a little dormant to the awareness. So help awaken me. Share with me what you mean by this environment being universal potentials. What does that mean to you? Ask them. They'll share with you really wild, awesome, amazing stories of opportunities we never thought we could have because we might have been stuck in left brain, linear, logical you know, sequenced environments that kept us not expanding, not growing, and having challenges with problem, problem solving and developing deeper consciousness. So what is the value of having multiple awarenesses at the same time? It certainly isn't ADD. I think it's so funny because I want to, I'm really fascinated to get together with psychologists, neurologists, and other people so that we could really have some deep masterminding ideas about what ADD is. What if ADD is not a problem? What if ADD is not bad? 
What if we could have the capacity to hold multiple states of awareness at the same time? Because I know autistic children can. I know children with some processing difficulties in the linear world have multiple states of awareness at the same time. Helping them focus, maybe even sometimes hyper-focus, but focus with mastery on how to work with one thing. So if the multiple awareness person, the interdimensional walker walks in the room and has this information, this information, this information come in all at the same time. But they're in a room called, a, I'm in Spanish class to learn a language that is my, a secondary language to me, it's not my primary language, and I wanna focus on learning Spanish, then the lights pinging or the noise making or the, the waves breaking at the surf spot that I love to go surfing at are in the background of my awareness and I'm able to bring to the foreground of my awareness and focus on Spanish. Because I'm in class, I choose to be in school and I choose to be a lifelong learner. And inside of that availability, I have the opportunity, regardless of the multiple uh, awarenesses that I can have. So maybe the Spanish teacher is teaching sports in Spanish. And one of the sports activities, because we're in San Diego, for example, that surfing is a big part of sports for this area. And so maybe the Spanish teacher is going to teach us surfing terms in Spanish. There I can bring the forefront of my, bring to the forefront of my awareness, the surfing that I had in mind. Now I can combine surfing and Spanish and learn more deeply. Why? Because I really want to go surfing. And it's really cool because I'm committed to being in school and I'm committed to learning. I can learn Spanish and surfing at the same time. Those are multiple states of awarenesses that we have that we don't recognize we can navigate. We can choose to think differently. We can choose to put aside other awarenesses rather than being sensory overwhelm. So sharing with children and adults who have troubles with bringing in too many sensory informations at the same time, which one would I like to focus on? Just like we talked about the different staircases at the beginning of the show. So the value of having multiple awarenesses at the same time is the vastness of picking where you want to focus is available. Your tool belt of accessing information and understanding is much broader than someone who's very linear in the box and thinking this way because they tend to focus on only what's in the box. So you can focus on the box, but then just know that around you, you might have 500 boxes to choose from. Which one will you choose? And how will you create that choosing process? Many empaths will do it based on feeling. That one over there on the left feels good. Let's pull that one in. Seers who have the ability to see, I see that one light up. That's lighting up yellow. That's the yellow. I want that yellow. Bring that box over here. Omniscient people that know things, I know this box right underneath me is the box I need to access. There's so many different ways we can access information and understanding to choose a focal point. Isn't that fun? So let's talk about navigating interdimensional walking. I talk about this as the walker's toolbox. You want to first connect to your inner guidance. Your inner guidance will help guide you through these processes. Then I'd love you to trust that walking experience. Trust where you're going. Trust what you're understanding. Bring your heart to your mind. Bring your body, bring your interdimensional walking to those areas we haven't yet discovered. Release the judgments of others who may negate the walker's reality. Finding fault that it's not okay to see multiple dimensions at the same time. And we have the walker stand 
to support consensus in the conversation with reality negotiation skill sets that we support you in developing. So let's talk about com providing comfort for the interdimensional walker. We have a program that we are so excited to share with you that augments the learning and the opportunity for exploration and discovery in these TV series every Tuesday. And then every Wednesday at night, experience remote energy healing transmissions. The enrollment area is at accessinfiniteknowledge.com. And when you enroll, and after you've watched these TV series, because we wanted them to be augmentative and supportive to grow the whole superpower you, as you receive on our special offer 33% off with the coupon code in all capital letters, AWAKE33. So sign up with us, enjoy remote energy transmission processes for a very special price so that for 12 weeks, you get to experience it while you're experiencing these amazing TV shows that I so enjoy sharing with you, really expanding, opening, activating your hidden superpowers. Thank you for joining me today. I'll see you next week.